This is not something that's new. This, people think it's new because it's different. Because we're focusing so much on sex ed and that is, um, that's not what I think we should be doing. We're educating children about heterosexual values from the day they're born. But not everybody fits into those norms. And should a minority um, have, have uh, you know, the opportunity to say what, what we want in our values, because I totally get, you know, where you're feeling like an outcast, you're feeling isolated, you're feeling alone. When we speak to somebody, when we look at them as a person, we are so much more able to break down those stereotypes. So I really do believe it's about teaching higher values and morality in the sense of, you know, trust and honesty and all those kind of things. Well, welcome to Both Sides Now Table Talk, and we're happy that you've joined us. We've got some amazing guests today. We're going to be talking about sex education in the school systems, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a strong topic. It's an important topic, but before we get into that, I just want to introduce you to our guests and to our panel. We've got with us our, our panel. Um, Serena Preslin white is with us. We've also got Alberta Mwembo is with us, but today we have some guests that are taking out their time to be able to talk about these important topics, Dr. Simone Horwitz, and, and she is originally from South Africa. She's an author and now an associate professor in the Department of History at the University of Saskatchewan, uh, where her research and teaching focuses on African history, history of medicine uh, in Africa, especially HIV and AIDS, as well as teaching the history of gender and sexuality. Dr. Horwitz also co-chairs the Provost Committee on Gender and Sexual Diversity at the University of Saskatchewan, and she's also involved in other committees as well, too. So we welcome you, Dr. Horwitz, to the show as well. Our other guest is Dr. Anne Gillies. Anne Gillies is uh, trained jointly in professional counseling and theology, earning a PhD in philosophy of professional counseling from Liberty University, with a primary focus in attachment theory, complex trauma, and sexuality. Her research revolves around attachment theory, child um, sexual abuse, same-sex sex attraction, and gender dysphoria. Anne has recently retired and after 25 years of counseling focused on individuals struggling with complex traumatic stress, she's now finishing and working on her third book, which is an autobiography. So she's also an author there. And both of them are actually authors as well too. So welcome to our show, um, Dr. Gillies as well. And we're happy to have you as well. We're specifically wanting to focus on, on sex education curriculum in schools because that is a hot topic right now and it's very controversial because people have different views on it. There's a statement here it says children should learn about gender and sexuality as early on in their development as possible. Dr. Horowitz I'm going to have you address that. What do you think about that? Okay, so just to start off, I just want to uh, position myself. I'm a cisgendered queer woman. My pronouns are she and her. And I really speak from the position of a privileged white woman with a degree. And so what I'm talking from my position as a, um, as a person with lived experience, I'm, I'm not a psychologist. I don't have the experience of working in this field. My experience is lived experience. And I can't talk for people of color. I can't speak for trans people. I can't speak for people gender di divergent, but I can speak as an ally from the community that I know. And I think that we need to start off by differentiating between sex ed and education around gender issues and around acknowledging the existence of people who are differently differently gendered or queer families and i think that while sex ed and sex acts i don't think should necessarily be introduced early on i think teaching people to respect teaching people to love, teaching people to know about other genders is fundamentally important. I think that by teaching that there are gender diverse families and that there are different types of families, that there are families with two moms or two dads, um, and that there are people who don't identify as either male or female, teaches empathy, teaches respect, and it opens the doors to future conversations. And I think that those things can, cannot be taught early enough. So I would say right from as early as possible to teach people to believe that there are 
differences between people, but that all people should be respected and loved, I think is fundamentally important. So, so you're of the viewpoint, not necessarily to get into sexual acts or the act of sex itself, but you, but, but in terms of the lifestyle, so from gender, gender diversity, you know, for, for children to understand as early as possible that this is a reality in society and, and from your perspective, that will help them to be understanding, you know, tolerant, compassionate, and, and, and not look at them as different or odd. Right, and it also helps those students who feel that way. You know, um, my, my, I didn't think that there was anybody else like me. I spent my entire primary school career thinking that there was something wrong with me because I didn't know that there were other people like me. I didn't know what the words were to explain what I was feeling. And so we teach people to be tolerant, but we also teach people that these things are, are okay. And so we take the, the the feeling of loneliness and uh, away from them. So I think those two things are, are really important. So becoming familiar with those differences a little bit is what might help them to be more understanding. And it, it would appear to be more natural than maybe perhaps what your experience was growing up. Uh, Dr. Gillis, how would you address this? Uh, you know, that, that kind of comment about children, you know, being educated as soon as possible. Well, I'm not in favor of educating them on aspects of sexuality. What I really uh, would like to see is that parents begin to educate their child on the whole biological anatomy. You know, a two-year-old little boy sitting in the tub says, you know, he's looking and she, a mom or dad can say, you know, that's your penis and you, you're a boy and this is a little girl, your sister is different than you. And so biological anatomy, I also think, you know, gender, uh, the whole subject of gender, but gender is very stereotyping because it's how we express femininity and masculinity. So we want to make sure we understand what that means. And I think for children, as simple as possible for them, sexuality in itself is a matter of being sexual or engaging in um, sexual activity. And I don't believe that that needs to be um, in early grades at all, in any primary grades, that we don't need to teach young children the how-tos of having sex. We need to teach refusal and consent. If that's what's considered normal, I'm a boy you know, with a penis, and this is a girl with a vagina, and then how do you differentiate when you talk about gender? Because apparently gender, my understanding with gender issues, it has nothing to do with your biology. So the teaching is, it has nothing to do with, the, you're not necessarily a boy because you have a penis and you're not a girl because you have a vagina. So, so how are we gonna be teaching our children? I don't think, to be honest, there's anyone that would disagree with teaching values of love and respect and acceptance of human beings, right? I don't think that's a problem. I think that where there's a controversy is for example, we're going to get into that, whether or not parents or some in society believe in the issues of, do I want a little girl being said that she's a boy, perhaps, and vice versa. And, and again, this is your experience, Dr. Horowitz, right? So, so that is the issue. You can't tippy-toe around that too much. It's not about a belief. It's about what it is that gender and, and how gender and biology are two separate things. Your biology is the parts that you are born with. Your gender is how you feel. Dr. Gillies put, put it so correctly that it's how we perform femininity or how we perform masculinity. Those things don't necessarily correlate with the um, sexual organs that you were given at birth. And so it's not about whether a, a girl believes that she's a, a boy or a girl. It's how she feels and what she knows in her heart. And I think we need to differentiate between the, the, the biology and the sexual biology, whether you have male or female parts, and whether you are a male or female, whether you are a male or female person in your gender, what, what your gender is. And those things are different and they can't be con conflated. And so, yes, do you have a penis, you are you are you have male body parts, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you as a person feel that you are male those things are not necessarily the same thing. And so the gender binary and the, the sex binary, which is you are have male or female parts, um, is not the same as the gender continuum where people fall on different places along the gender continuum. I think that we as parents and as um, educators, that we have to look at this as a really broad perspective and that one of the understandings that parents 
will and hopefully will continue to do and teach their children as they're growing up. Certainly the anatomy, but um, our biological uh, chromosomal anatomy and, and makeup is very determined. And it's, it's different than how we feel about our body. And how we feel about our body, even as children, is influenced by a whole lot of things. And that can be parental influence, it can be um, sort of certainly social media, other children. So our feelings change over time, continually. So basing um, our belief system on how we feel is not always, a, when you think about that, instead of basing it on biology, um, is not really a good thing to do. We need to base it and teach our children based on science, not on how they feel. I understand that feelings come out of what we think. So it's what you think, then you go into what you believe. Um, and again, that can come from all kinds of variables. That's my understanding as to how what makes you feel a certain way. I feel happy if I, if I see something coming my way that I value and it's been put into me, I'll be happy about that and I'll actually feel happy, but I might feel very sad if something t is taken away from me that, that I value, right? And so that's a loss. And so those are those kind of feelings. So, and again, that's the language. And, and Dr. Hortz, like, I really like that you're here because like not everybody understands what you mean by what you just said. People go up and down on feelings depending on, on what's taking place, but there's belief systems that you have to believe something that affects a lot of stuff, right? So that's, in, I'm saying in the broader perspective, not everybody agrees with you. So if, if I'm a person, like, let's just say if I'm from, from the faith of Islam, and I do not believe that. And I do not want my child to believe that. And I do not want them to start to learn that this is possibly something to believe. And I'm from that faith. Because some will just say, that's your ideology, that's your experience. I respect that. But I don't want you teaching my child that this is truth. There are plenty Muslim queer uh, people who, are, there are plenty Christian queer people. I'm Jewish, I'm practicing Jew. Um, there are plenty of people in my religious group who don't agree with my my way of life or how I or who they don't agree with who I am. But there are also plenty. There's a very big community of people who who believe very strongly in the principles of Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Who and who are practicing, who who are queer. And I think that that is something we should always we should always remember, and we should give we should respect children enough to give them the options of learning. About, the, about these these issues. I knew from the time I was in primary school that I was attracted to women and it hasn't changed. People I know amongst my trans friends, they knew from the time that they were young, it wasn't a belief. Nobody, I, I, I didn't know that there was such a thing as a queer person when I was, a, but I knew how I, how I felt. I knew that my life was, I was not gonna get marry a, a man and have children that wasn't the life I wanted to live. It wasn't a belief system. It was how I, it was my life. It was who I was. And I think that, and I think that that is really important to acknowledge that it's not influenced by society. N nobody made me, nothing in my childhood. I had a wonderful childhood. I had loving parents and there are two of us. And my sister is, is a straight cis woman. Uh, we were brought up exactly the same. We went through the same ch childhood and I, this is me. This is who I am. And I knew that from early on. And there are people in all communities who know that from early on. So, so it's going more than how I feel. It's, it's something innate for you. You feel like it's innate. It's there. It wasn't affected by ex external variables. It's there. And you can talk to people consistently in the community that will say they always knew that's how I am. Um, and so that's just kind of like, that's, that's my identity. And, that, and, and, that's, and people can't argue with, you know, what a person is known innately, right? But we're getting into now, why are we wanting to have to educate people into what you know innately, but someone doesn't agree with? Help me out here, but what age should we be expecting children to determine their identity? And, and again, should we be educating them in this manner? If it's innate, should we be educating everyone in this way? Identity is a multifaceted construct, and it should never be limited um, in an unhealthy manner to uh, like sexual identity. 
we shouldn't be focusing on sexual identity. We have values, worldviews, our culture, nationality, abilities, uh, all kinds of things that are aspects of our identity as well as sex. But I don't believe we need to be teaching children to define themselves through something uh, as limited as sex or sexuality. So you would say there's higher values to educate children in that would be age appropriate and developmentally appropriate, that those are the values rather than focusing on sexuality. Well, I think it's uh, sexuality is one aspect. Absolutely. But it's limited. Like you're saying simply, you know, you've got a penis, you've got that, you know, but not to the point of talking about, you know, same sex attraction. The reality is um, when we talk about gender and then we'll get into um, transgender, I expect, but I mean, we're teaching children um, about something that it, for all of history has been a, a very small portion of um, the population, extremely small. And now, and it was always an anomaly, you know, and now we're making it um, sound like it's like, this is just a normal kind of thing. And I disagree with that. I totally agree that we should never define people totally by their sexuality. The problem is when you erase that sexuality, when you are growing up as a heterosexual child, you are educated all around you about the way you feel. You see movies, you see people on advertising, you see families with a mom, dad, and a kid all around you. We're educating children about heterosexual values from the day they're born. But not everybody fits into those norms. So we can't say that we, can't, we shouldn't educate um, children about the ways of, of living because heterosexual couples, heterosexual people are seeing themselves represented in everything they do. Growing up, never seeing a, a family with two moms is soul destroying for children. Until recently, you never saw queer people on TV. It is soul destroying for somebody. Until recently, you never saw trans people in the media. Soul destroying for people who think that they are different, that they are, that they are the only one like, the, like them. And so teaching those identities, it's not encouraging it. It's saying there are people who are different, whether they are a minority or a majority. There's also a man, there's all sorts of different minorities um, in the world. And just because there are only 100 Jews in Saskatoon doesn't mean we don't teach people that there are Jewish people in Saskatoon and Jewish people should be respected as should Christian people, as should Muslim people, because we're a, a vast minority. So just because we are a minority doesn't mean we don't teach people. Teaching somebody is not, teaching somebody is not giving them a how-to. Teaching somebody to respect people of color doesn't change the color of their skin. Teaching people to respect people of gender variance doesn't make you gender variant. We're talking about, you know, sex education in the school system. And Dr. Gillis, you brought up, brought up the statement that it's still a very small minority. And should a minority um, have, have uh, you know, the opportunity to say what, what we want in our values? Because I totally get, you know, we're you're feeling like an outcast, you're feeling isolated, you're feeling alone, you don't understand this, you know, should that minority to be able to, to say, we expect this to be taught in the schools versus maybe another minority that says, my life values should be taught in the schools and I'm a minority. We don't bring in an educational system that teaches everyone about um, physical illnesses or or about handicap, someone being in a wheelchair because, you know, they, um, for one reason or another, there are so many, and actually it's a far higher percentage of children who have physical or mental handicaps. And we do not bring in a whole education system to teach them about other children. What we need to teach, and I think Dr. Horwich said this, and I totally agree, we need to teach our children good values. We need to teach them respect for themselves and for other children. We need to teach them how to honor and respect their own bodies and respect others. And I, I think that is one of the big things we need to be teaching rather than focusing in on sexual differences, which actually alienate people. So I don't think it's really, really helpful in the long run. And I think it's, it's creating uh, some big issues in our school system 
big issues in families and with the children. So that's my concern for sure. Again, you're going back to there's there's better values, more important things that would actually probably cover a broader scope of minority issues. If children learned how to respect a difference, if children learned how to honor one another, if children learned how to, that that in itself could address, you know, um, if someone has two moms, or that could also address if somebody has a handicap where they look strange, or that could address, do you know what I mean? Say you're saying those values would cover all of the minority issues, um, and it might be more helpful than specifically putting it into the sex, like the curriculum of an actual school. There are a lot of children who feel like outcasts for one reason or another. So I really do believe it's about teaching higher values and morality in the sense of, you know, trust and honesty and all those kind of things. There's a statement here that says understanding gender diversity breaks down stereotypes and reduces confusion for individuals. And again, I mean, Dr. Gillies, you kind of alluded to that with children, but but do you want to address that, Dr. Horowitz? Do you, you know, do you believe that understanding gender diversity will break down stereotypes and reduce confusion? And let's go like, because you had the experience as a child, right? But because we're kind of talking about in the school systems, that's kind of what we're talking about. And I, and I appreciate you said, I'm, you know, that's, you know, um, your, yours is based on your experience, not on research on these, these areas. But do you think that it, it's helpful to specifically teach on gender when we're talking about this? Or do you think that the higher values are enough? And do you think it causes more confusion or less if we actually talk about gender diversity in schools? I believe the higher values are important, but one of those higher values has to be an explicit acknowledgement of gender difference and an explicit acknowledgement of queer pe the existence of queer people and that that is, is a way of life. I, I don't think we can only focus on, on bigger values. Ideally, it would be wonderful if all parents would teach their children about gender diversity, but how many kids are sitting at home with these their, their feelings, their own knowing about their, their themselves and where they fit on the gendered spectrum and can't bring it up with their parents. Know that their parents have a very different uh, ideas. They, The school is the only safe place that they can actually learn some of these differences if they differ in values to their parents. And that's okay. Um, and so I, I think that understanding gender diversity breaks down stereotypes hugely. I don't necessarily look like somebody's um, vision necessarily the stereotypical vision of a lesbian woman that that's not how I don't look like that stereotypical person so to say that there are all these differences to explain to people that it's okay on different levels I think breaks down those stereotypes and tells them that you can be different and you can be different in a number of, of different ways and I think it reduces the confusion because it says to people that there are different ways of being in the world and that that's okay. And if you go, if your best friend has two dads, that's okay. And if you grow up to want to have two dads or to be in a relationship with another, with another man, that's okay. But I, I do think that we have to understand it specifically. Those values are, are all important, but we have to use the words gay and lesbian. We have to use the words trans. This is the part that's difficult because you've made a couple of statements. You know, you're saying to say that this person has two dads, that's okay. Some people would say to say this person has two dads, I'm gonna accept and respect their choices, but it's not okay because I don't agree with it. So to say to somebody, you know, um, I, I accept you and I, I respect you, but it's not okay for me and I don't agree with you is the case that it's been like, for example, with religions all over the world. It's been like that for all kinds of things. For some, they believe everybody should accept the experience of someone and believe that that's how they, you know, that, that that should be acceptable. To some, they say, no, we don't accept that, but we can still respect you. But I think that's the distinction I want to kind of look at here right now, because not everybody says it's okay in terms of agreeing with that life. Not everybody believes it's okay. Some people, they all acknowledge it and acknowledge the difference and they might respect you and love you and have a great relationship with you, but they might not say, I wanna say that's okay. I don't agree that there's, I believe in binary, you know, there's two genders and I don't want my ta child taught that it's okay to have more than one. I don't want that. And I think that that's where parents come in. I think you can absolutely teach children at schools to, to know that there are other people who are different 
um, and to know that there are people who who are queer. And it's okay for me to go home and for your parents to say, we as, as a family don't, don't agree with that. But don't take that away from the classroom. I don't have any problems with learning in the classroom that there are people who are gender di divergent. There are people who have two moms, two dads. And I have no problem with the children going home and then having a discussion with their parents. As a person feel very strongly that I would like the children's parents to, to believe and to accept how, how we live our lives. But I, I, I have no doubt that they don't. And that's okay. But it's better for a child, I think, to learn that there are other options that they might be, and then to hear at home that this is not what we believe, this is not our values. People can have, I, I strongly believe that people can have different values. But if they don't learn this in the schools and they don't know that there's even an option of that, and then they don't, and they don't have a discussion with their parents, they're losing out on, a, on knowledge that is so important to have. And that knowledge doesn't have to be taught from a activist perspective. It can be taught from, it's a taught from a perspective that this is how the world works. This is how some people are. And you can leave it at that and encourage people to go home. And you know, and to respect parents, to have the right to be able to talk with their children and teach their children what they want. Not everybody out there, by the way, with the activists believe that. As a matter of fact, there are laws being pushed where parents could be charged a fine if they if they counsel their child differently. So we know that not everybody, you know, believes that they should. But there's two parts to that too, because you know, so I've I've been in the workplace for a lot of years doing management consulting, and I often would say, you spend more waking hours with your workplace family than you do with your natural family. And the same thing with kids is they're in school longer than they are with their parents, more waking hours in the school. So you think about socialization, you think about what they're learning. I'm not saying that you know, the sex ed curriculum is, is, is taking up all that time, but I am saying that in schools, when it comes to schools, what are children being educated with? Many parents will say, well, they're in the school longer than they're at home. And then even as you said, just like your experience, you didn't have parents to talk to about how you were feeling. There's some children that'll go home at the end of the day of school and not have parents that will be able to talk with them if they are feeling perhaps confused, if they are feeling like they're not gonna fit in with their peers if they don't agree. What is happening to a child's brain is we're teaching them to deny reality. So that's what's creating such deep confusion in their minds because a child, I mean, a child from the earliest ages, right, um, in the bathtub, you know, you can teach them their, their sex just by dialoguing with them because they do want to know, you know, what that is. And sometimes, you know, I remember my children when they were very young, my oldest son and daughter, I would bathe them together in the tub. And, and my son had questions like, just kind of, what's that, you know, and he could hardly talk, you know, <laughs> he was only a couple of years old. But so we would talk about that. And well, your sister is a girl, and you're a boy, and you have different, different parts. And so a child automatically knows that. I mean, they're, they look different from one another. And so that is a reality to them. And so now we're telling them that they can't trust the realities. Uh -huh. So right from the earliest ages, we're trying to manipulate their brains. And because they are like sponges, they're taking it all in and, and trying to grapple with it. It's overwhelming what the children are learning in the classroom. So their brains are really trying to reprocess everything that they know and understand to be real into something like, well, that's not true. And so it's a very confusing thing and they aren't able to really discern uh, what is true and do critical thinking on that until, you know, that part, that abstract thinking doesn't really kick in until about just before puberty or sometimes after puberty. The confusion comes when we begin to teach that feelings are more important than reality, you know, um, that they can choose their sex. That's very confusing to young children. And this, uh, to be um, part 
and parcel of being cared for and loved. We don't have a problem with, with that, treating everyone with respect. That's absolutely true. But teaching children an ideology um, that they get to choose their own sex is absolutely false. And, you know, then when, along with that, kind of what's being implanted is that they aren't able to trust their parents, aren't able to trust the caregivers because those parents don't understand it. They don't understand them and they don't know what's going on. And then the truth, the biological truth that their parents may be telling them then becomes bigoted, hateful, you know, and it, it's skewed to look like violence toward other children if they, if children are taught to um, to actually adhere to their parents' values and beliefs. And so it's very, very deep. It's very hard to really understand all of the confusion a child has. You know, again, it has to do with a solution to being inclusive with children. It has to do with a solution to respect human beings. It has to do with a solution. All of those things, we, we need a solution to that. But the solution that's being pushed right now is there are a lot of people that are not buying it. 